In this video, we're going to continue our hunt for non-abelian simple groups. We know there is a non-abelian simple group of order 60. It's in fact a five, the alternating group. Um, and we're trying to argue that there is not one smaller than that. Not a not no non-abelian simple group, of course. So in previous videos, we've uh, cut our list down to the possible orders of 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, and 60. We can't remove 60 because we know it works, but we're going to shave off a few more in this lecture. In particular, by the end of this video, we're going to take off 30 and 42. All right, so let's start with 30. 30 is different than any of the other ones we've considered so far because 30 is the product of three distinct primes. Three, uh, two, three, and five. There's no repetition, but we have three distinct primes. So I want us to consider what are the possibilities here. So if we think of a Seeloff 5 subgroup, uh, how many are there? By Seeloff's third theorem, we know that this has to divide 6 because 6 is the 5 prime part. That is, if we take away the, the factors of 5, what's left over? 6, 2 times 3. Seeloff's third theorem says the number of 5 subgroups will divide this number. So there's 6. We also know that n5 is congruent to 1 mod 5 like so. So we have to look at the divisors of 6, 1, 2, 3, and 6. Which of those are divisible? Which of those are 1 mod 5, not 2, not, th not 2 and 3? You're left with 1 and 6. Now, if there was a unique CLA 5 subgroup, it would be normal, and therefore that group would not be simple, so we don't have to worry about that case. So we're then going to consider, okay, what if we have exactly 5, excuse me, what if we have 6 uh, CLA 5 subgroups? All right, so they're not unique, so we get five of them, uh, so we get six of them, excuse me. Now, because they're each order five, each of these Seeloff subgroups has to be order five, this, the Seeloff, the Seeloff five subgroups have to be Z5 itself, which is going to contain the identity, right, the identity, and then you're going to have um, four elements of order five. It's a cyclic group after all, something like this. Um, then when you consider, if you had two different Seeloff 5 subgroups, like if P and Q are Seeloff 5 subgroups of G, then because of order considerations using Lagrange's theorem, you're going to get that P uh, intersect Q is equal to 1. That's the only possible order of their intersection. So these subgroups only contain the identity together. And so each Seeloff 5 subgroup contributes five elements of order 5 to the pot here. So if I take 6, the number of subgroups we have, 5 minus 1, the number of elements of order 5 there, you get 6 times 4, which is 24. We have 24 elements of the group, which are order 5. Now, we started with a group of order 30, right? 30 take away 24 is equal to 6. We have then 6 remaining elements of the group, which are not elements of order five. One of those elements is the identity. Some of them have to be group, uh, have to be order two. Some of them have to be order three. Um, so, so far this argument is very similar to what we did when we considered uh, 56, but at this moment we don't, we don't, we're not quite there yet because we don't know the group necessarily has a subgroup of order six. Um, so we have to still consider what's happening here. Now let's consider, let's consider the three subgroups, the Seeloff three subgroups. If there is a unique Seeloff 3 subgroup, it's necessarily normal, so therefore we're not simple. So, okay, can we have non-normal uh, you know, non Seeloff 3 subgroups? We'd have to have multiple ones. Again, by using Seeloff's third theorem, we get that N3, it has to divide, in this case, 10, right? Um, all right, well, that's kind of interesting there. So, because where did 10 come from? Well, we took... 30 divided by 3 has to be 10, but it also has to be congruent to 1 mod 3. So what are our possibilities? 1 would work, 2 doesn't work, 5, e, no, doesn't work. Oh, but 10, 10 could work, right? 10 is, you know, 9 plus 1. So if there was only one 3 subgroup, it would be a normal subgroup. We're not normal, so we have to assume we have 10. We have to assume we have 10 um, subgroups of order three. But then the same argument applies. Uh, each of these Seeloff subgroups has to be order three. I mean, they, they're order three and therefore they have to be cyclic of order three. They will contain the identity, some other element, and then it's square. Um, both of these elements, of course, are elements of order three. 
and the intersection of any two Seeloff 3 subgroups is going to be trivial. So between the 10 subgroups, each of them will contribute two elements of order three. So that gives us 20 elements total, but we only have six elements left. So there's a deficit of 14 elements, and I haven't even considered I haven't even considered the elements of order two yet, the 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 two the seal of two subgroup. So we've already got a contradiction that we can't have multiple seal of five subgroups and multiple seal of three subgroups. That that's that requires too many elements here. Um, in which case, this then tells us that every group of order thirty must have a unique seal of five subgroup or a unique seal of three subgroup. Therefore, in either case. It can't be simple because one of these Seeloff subgroups will then be normal. Um, I want you to convince yourself that these same arguments could be adapted for the number 42, which is 2 times 3 times 7, uh, which if we try to provide the details very quickly here. The idea in this situation is even better. If you have n equals 7, right, um, this has to, excuse me, divide 6 but also we need that N7 is congruent to one mod seven. So it's actually easier than 30, right? Because divisors of six are one, two, three, and six. The only one that's congruent to one mod seven is one. So if you're a group of order 42, then you have to have a unique Seeloff seven subgroup. And so um, I'm gonna leave it as an exercise to the viewer here to, to strengthen this pattern here. If you take N to equal P times Q times R, where P, Q, and R are three distinct primes, then we could say that no group, no group of order N is simple. Oftentimes you get something like the following, where maybe one of the primes is too big so that there's no opportunity to have multiple um, Seeloff uh, R groups in that situation, like with 42. But it could also be the case where you have 30, where it's like, okay, yeah, this other, where's my factorization of 30? There you are. It could be that when considering five, the other number is big enough um, to have multiple. And then when you look at a different prime like three, their product is big enough to have multiples. But when you start considering all of them, you're gonna get too many elements in the end. So 30 and 42 are off our list. And we'll consider the remaining ones in our next video.